Thank you, Caleb. You guys must just love announcements so much. <laughs> Applauding him so much like that, coming up here for announcements. It's like camp or something. <laughs> well, now I don't know what to do. You guys are making me feel all awkward. Um, so I'm going to do another announcement because you clapped. Um, <laughs> This is the last Sunday to sign up for the marriage conference coming up September 20th and 21st to get the early bird rate of $35. You can't even get, you can't even go out for supper for 35 bucks, but you can get some excellent teaching, get some excellent tools to help you in your marriage. And so 35 bucks before September 1st. After that, it's 45. So I encourage you to sign up early. There are still spots available, and uh, it will be a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I want today to, to do something a little bit different. And so if you'll give me grace to do that, I'm going to do that. Well, I'm probably going to do it whether you give me the grace for it or not. Let's be honest. Uh, so here at Living Hope, we place a very high value on life groups. They're excellent places for discipleship, for fellowship, for sharing your prayer needs, for getting to pray with other people, getting to know other people better. Uh, Getting to know people on Sunday mornings is hard. There's a lot of people, and you want to connect with with more people than you really can. And so home groups, life groups are an excellent opportunity to get together with a smaller group of people and to really get to know them very well. And you get to get to eat together, you get to learn in God's word together, and it's just amazing times. I really, really recommend them. In fact, the two things that we recommend the most here at Living Hope for connection, for community, and for discipleship are life groups and serve teams. And so I encourage you to be part of one of each of those. And uh, today, actually, I would love to actually just talk about what life groups we're going to be offering here come this fall. Most life groups are going to be starting the Sunday after Labor Day weekend, so September 8th, and uh, throughout the week they'll be starting up. But uh, there are some that are going to be starting a little bit later than that, and there's actually one that's already going. And so I want to tell you about those. We have some slides up there to talk about them and to give you some information. And so when the slide is up there, take a picture because the picture of the leader is there. And so talk to that leader about getting into that life group. But as always, before we get into the content, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you have a place for every single one of us in these different life groups and on a serve team. Lord, that you've created each of us wonderfully, marvelously, and uniquely to, to fit into a certain group, to have our gifts, and to, for those gifts to be used in the church. Lord, we want to know you, and we want to make you known. We pray, Lord, that, that as we hear about the different life groups today, Lord, that if there's a specific group for us, that, that you would really put that one on our hearts. But Lord, I pray we would make ourselves available. And uh, as Caleb was talking about, just being, being willing to put ourselves out there, Father, we, I pray that we would be willing to put ourselves out there to, to really position ourselves to receive from you the most. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first group I want to talk to you about is the only group that's actually going right now, and it is starting on Sunday, so I'm just kind of going through the week. We're going to talk Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to go throughout the week like that. And so Sundays, Elmer and Janice lead a group, and they're studying spirit, soul, and body, and they meet at 1 o'clock. The address is right there, and as I said, it's already going. So the author of this material is Andrew Womack, and he says this about his material. As our knowledge of our natural world has increased, our knowledge of spiritual things has decreased. There is a whole world 
that man, in all his wisdom, is ignorant of. The world of the spirit. And I'm not just talking about spiritual realm outside of us, but also the spiritual realm inside of us. Inside every believer. We aren't evolved animals. We were created in God's image and likeness. We are spirit beings. The ultimate way to control bad behavior isn't by more laws, metal detectors, or social engineering. It's by changing the hearts of people one by one through the work of Christ. I've discovered that I'm redeemed from the law because the law wasn't made for righteous man. The law was given to show us our need for salvation, but it couldn't save us. But what the law couldn't do, Jesus Christ did. And I'm now the righteousness of God in Christ. This entitles me and you as a believer to everything God is and has. I have his authority to use. And to the degree that I've done this, I've experienced miraculous results. I'm so excited about this, I'm trying to let the whole world know about these truths. So if you want to know more about these truths, I encourage you to talk to Elmer and Janice today. Second group I want to talk about is the men's group. That is Band of Brothers, led by Scott Frederick. And that is Monday nights at 7.30, just upstairs in the lounge right here. And it starts September 9th. The Hebrew word geborim is used to describe the mighty warriors in the Bible. This is a community of men. The Band of Brothers is a community of men on a mission to be more like Jesus. We believe that a man is built by the influence of his spirit, mind, heart, and body, and all aspects must be addressed if he is to live at his full potential. This is a gathering of men who challenge and each other to be better servants, leaders, fathers, husbands, and financial givers, and support the local church. Many men live in isolation. Many men internalize and don't reach out. But this group welcomes men of all ages, all nationalities, and all backgrounds. They're not just an event or a gathering. They connect men in a deeper community, and cultivate true brotherhood with other men. They're committed to training men spiritually, mentally, and physically to be active warriors for Christ because we are stronger together. So men, if you're looking for some strong men to link arms with, to live life together with, I recommend this group. Now on to Tuesdays. First group on Tuesday is Shelly Frederick's group, and she's gonna be, they're going to be studying Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. That's going to be happening Tuesdays at 1.30. You'll notice that the starting date is to be determined. And so if you're really interested in this group, I recommend talking to Shelly, uh, finding out what time, what day they're going to be starting on that Tuesday. So of Experiencing God, Canadian pastor and author Henry Blackaby said, it is my life message. It describes the way I have always understood and walked with God. I had shared these truths in many places before writing this book. People repeatedly asked, have you ever written this down? God's people need to hear these truths. I eventually put the material into the book, Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God. We need to be doers of his word, not hearers only. Since its release in 1990, God has used this study to change millions of lives and thousands of churches around the world. I'm amazed that God, in his mercy and in his grace, used such a modest work by ordinary people. So many lives have been radically changed. Inmates, military personnel, lawyers, judges, CEOs, professional athletes, politicians, parents, and more. Experiencing God is based on seven scriptural realities that teach us how to develop a true relationship with the Creator and discover your special place in the kingdom. Ladies, in this group, you can experience God accomplish His purposes through your life when you enter an intimate love relationship with Him by encouraging a deep walk with the Holy Spirit. Talk to Shelley Frederick if you're interested in that group, ladies. Another women's group is led by Brittany and Eileen, and that is on the Armor of God 
by Darlene Schatt. Led, uh, and that's on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Starts September 10th. And note, there is a cost for books. It's not like it's $4,000. You can likely afford it. If you can't, please come talk to us in the office. Uh, we do make allowances for people that really want to be in a group but can't afford the books. We definitely want you to be equipped. And so if the cost is an issue, we don't want to make it an issue. Come talk to us. Come, talk to Lorna, who just walked in. She'll help you out. So Darlene Schatz says this of her book. This Bible study is designed to embolden our faith and deepen our understanding of God's word. As we examine Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, we'll uncover the power and purpose of each of the different items in spiritual armor. We'll see how each piece works together to strengthen our walk with the Lord and lead us toward a greater defense of our faith. Each chapter includes biblical encouragement, thought-provoking questions, and interesting facts about the armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul arms believers by laying out the full armor of God. Every piece from the belt of truth to the sword of the Spirit is a vital part in our defense against the enemy. That fight that you had with your spouse, that rift between family members, those doubts you had about your faith, that temptation that led you astray. The real enemy here was Satan and his army of angels. If we hope to live a victorious life, we must be fully protected and ready to stand our ground at all times. So ladies, if you want to strengthen your walk with our Lord, I encourage you to reach out to Brittany and Eileen and to get that straight, greater defense in your faith journey. Another Tuesday group is led by Wade and Tara, and that is the Healing Academy by Chad Gonzalez. And uh, so they're meeting Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Starts, note the late start date, October 15th. And uh, so you, know, you can just be in touch with them, let them know, hey, I'm coming, reserve a seat for me. So the Healing Academy will cause your faith to soar as you learn about your union with Christ and how to bring healing to your world. Four skills you will learn. You'll learn and understand your identity and union with Christ. The most important thing for every believer to learn is their union with Christ. It is from this position that we have access to all that Jesus died for us to have and to fulfill the plan of God for our lives. Second skill that you'll learn is how to clearly hear from God. Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. I only say what I hear the Father saying. In order for us to have that same level of success and, and communication that Jesus had, we must hear and see from heaven. Third is how to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. The Apostle Paul said to covet the gifts. Every single believer has been anointed by God and graced to flow in these heavenly gifts and so we can manifest heaven here on earth. And the fourth skill that you'll learn is how to tap into the flow of healing and miracles. Jesus said in John 14, 12, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. Healing and miracles are to be normal for the sons and daughters of God. So if you want to see them normalized in your life, talk to Wade and Tara. Join this group. Another Tuesday night group is Freedom Session with Lorna and Joanne. And that starts September 10th. Again, there is a cost for books. But again, if that is the thing, the only thing keeping you from joining this group, please come talk to us in the office so Freedom Session is a powerful healing discipleship journey, inviting you to rewrite your story with a God-inspired ending. Through biblical teaching, small group discussion, and personal reflection, Jesus will heal your heart and empower you to live a life of freedom and purpose. Freedom Session is one of the most effective, encompassing, and transferable healing discipleship ministries that's available today. Jesus didn't, doesn't identify you according to your behaviors or behaviors committed against you, and neither do they in this group. As you open your life, hurts, and will to the leadership of Jesus 
and invite him to reinterpret those painful memories that Satan uses to keep you in bondage, Jesus will heal your heart, set you free, and give you a vision for your life that you never thought was possible. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and life to the full. The only regret that we hear from Freedom Session graduates is that they didn't start it sooner. If you're tired of not being free, of not living life to the full, I'm certain that Freedom Session can help you find more freedom and live life more to the full. Another group that's meeting on Tuesdays is Claude and Marion Schnell in their study on the book of Acts starting at 7.15 on Tuesdays, September 10th. So I got this summary from gotquestions.org, actually a really great kind of general um, biblical knowledge website. If you're wondering something about the Christian faith and you don't know where to look, go to gotquestions.org. It's a great resource. Here's what they say about, about Acts. God can do amazing things through ordinary people when he empowers them through his spirit. You know, we're all just ordinary people. We heard earlier about Henry Blackaby and about how that book is just being used, but it was just written, it was just produced, it was made by ordinary folk. That's all we ever are is ordinary people, and God wants to use every one of us. The book of Acts shows how God essentially took a group of fishermen and commoners and used them to turn the world upside down. God took a Christian-hating murderer and transformed him into history's greatest Christian evangelist, and he even wrote almost half of the New Testament. God used the, pro, uh, the persecution the Christians endured to help stimulate the increasingly rapid expansion of the fledging church. God can and does do the same through us by changing our hearts, empowering us by the Holy Spirit, and giving us a passion to spread the good news of salvation through Christ. If we try to accomplish God's work on our own, we will fail. But like the disciples in Acts 2, we must faithfully proclaim the gospel, trust God for the results. Acts 2.42 says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, which we're going to celebrate later today, and to prayer. God did amazing things through ordinary people, just like you and I. And he wants to continue to do amazing things through ordinary people, just like you and I, as we live out the great commission that God has given to us to make disciples of all nations through the power of the Holy Spirit. If that excites you, this group would be an excellent group for you to join. Now moving on to Wednesdays, there's a mummy drop-in for moms and kids to drop in and to attend as they can. It's led by our children's pastor, Caitlin Friesen. That is starting September 18th, one week after most of the group's other start. And it's Wednesdays right here in the kids' area at 10 a.m. in the Hope City Center. Babies are busy. Life is busy. Moms are busy. But relationship with Jesus and with each other doesn't happen accidentally. We need to purpose to get together. And that is what the ladies here want to do. And they also want to encourage one another in meaningful ways. So moms, this is a wonderful opportunity to bring your children to a safe and caring and loving environment, to get to know some other moms in similar situations to you, to hear some great advice on what they did to help their kids get to that next stage, learn how to be potty trained, learn how to um, sleep through the night, different things, and discipline them in loving ways, or maybe how to better incorporate God and his word, the Bible, into everyday life. And it's also a great opportunity to participate in a great biblical devotion with other moms that also want to learn and deepen their faith in their journey with Jesus. Kids get their playtime and their social time in. Moms get to visit, get to get some advice from other moms that have been there before, and they get to learn about what it means to be a woman of God and a mother to a new generation of loving and courageous Christians. 
So join that group. Wednesday is 10 a.m. starting September 18th. Another group is a young adults group for those aged 18 to 30 and led by our associate pastor, Adrian, and his wife, Jade. And uh, they're going to be studying Work as Worship by Pastor J.D. Greer. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Note a different start time there. Upstairs in the lounge here at Living Hope and starting that week of September 11th. Here's what J.D. Greer has to say about his material. We have been called to work with excellence, integrity, and diligence, and our careers are opportunities to be on mission for Christ in the marketplace. The Work as Worship Bible Study featuring J.D. Greer will help people understand the biblical mandate for work. When we think about serving God, we usually think about coming on staff at a church or volunteering at a church or a nonprofit. Those are definitely great things to do, but they aren't the only places that we can glorify God. Pastor J.D. explains how we can worship God and advance the gospel in our workplace, no matter our title, doesn't matter what we do, we can advance the kingdom of heaven right where we work. Whether you're working your dream job or are dreaming of the day when you can retire, your work is way more important than you think. Food is part of most of almost all of our life groups because food is good. Uh, but more than snacks, this, this group is a meal and study based group. So. Bring food to share because you're going to be having supper together. Another group meeting Wednesdays is Sean and Patty's group, and they're going to be studying on the book of Acts starting that same week, September 11th, Wednesdays at 7. And I got this summary uh, from gotquestions.org as well. We see in the book of James a challenge to faithful, um, faithful followers of Jesus Christ to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. While our faith walk, to be certain, requires a growth of knowledge of the word, James exhorts us to not stop there. Many Christians will find this epistle challenging as James James presents 60 obligations in only 108 verses. That's quite a lot. He focuses on the truths of Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount, and he motivates us to act upon what he taught. The epistle also puts to rest the idea that one can become a Christian and yet continue to live in sin, exhibiting no fruit of righteousness. Such a faith, James declares, is shared by the demons who believe and tremble, and yet such a faith cannot save because it is not verified by the works that always accompany true saving faith. Good works are not the cause of salvation, but are the result of it. If you're saved, you're going to want to do good works. So if you're wanting to be better at applying what you've learned, walking the walk and talking the talk, then this group is for you. Another group on Wednesdays is led by Josh and Jessica Young, and it's called Grace-Based Parenting by Dr. Tim Kimmel. Wednesdays at 7, starting September 11th. Here you'll discover a parenting style that nurtures a healthy family and displaces fear as a motivator for behavior. Learn how to meet your child's three driving inner needs for security, significance, and strength with the invaluable gifts of love, purpose, and hope. Modern parents are stressed out and tired. They've tried countless parenting books on the market, many of which are harsh, fear-based books that loving parents instinctively reject. As Christians, we frequently believe that the battle for a child's heart and soul is fought on the outside with rigid rules and boundaries where, in fact, the opposite is true. Dr. Tim Kimmel, founder of Family Matters Ministries, offers a timeless look at parenting, rejecting rigidity and checklists that don't work. Dr. Kimmel recommends a parenting style that is the opposite, emphasizing the importance of communicating the unconditional love of Christ, affirming this timeless message of grace to one's family. In grace-based parenting, you'll learn a parenting style that mirrors God's love, reflects his forgiveness, and displaces fear as a motivator. You'll learn why fear-based parenting is a guaranteed method to set up children for failure, and you'll learn 
how to provide a safe space for children to develop into functional adults with purpose, security, and inner strength. As we embrace the grace that God offers, we begin to give it, creating a solid foundation for growing morally strong and spiritually motivated children. This revolutionary material presents a whole new way to nurture your family. So parents, if you're needing new parenting skills or you're needing maybe a new perspective, I encourage you to prayerfully consider joining this group. Scott and Donna Nixon lead, lead another group that meets on Wednesdays, Wednesday, 7 p.m., starting 7, September 11th. They're leading Alpha. Alpha is an amazing program used all over the world. Alpha is a resource to create a space and a culture where people are excited to bring their friends to talk about Jesus. Many Christians see sharing the good news of Jesus as uncomfortable and an unnatural uh, thing for them to do or only for a select few experts on apologetics. In fact, a recent study showed that only 29% of religiously committed people in Canada view sharing the gospel or sorry or sharing the gospel or the good news of Jesus positively. That's less than one in three. 80% of guests that attend Alpha because of a personal invitation from someone that they know, and, and they keep attending because of the relationships that they get to build during Alpha. Sharing faith through Jesus is always relational. It's not just informational. This relational dimension of Alpha is what speaks loudest to a culture that suffers from increasing loneliness and isolation, where the primary question is no longer what do I believe, but where do I belong? Alpha creates that safe place for an encounter, an encounter with Jesus, an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Alpha creates a culture of invitation. As people invite their friends to Alpha, they get to experience the joy of seeing firsthand someone hearing about the good news of salvation through Jesus. This encourages and helps entire church communities recapture that joy of sharing the good news of Jesus. Alpha creates also a discipleship and a leadership pipeline. So if you have questions like, where do I belong? Or you are feeling lonely, you're feeling isolated, then this is an excellent study group for you to join. Is this the last one on Wednesdays? Yes, last one on Wednesdays is by Ed and Paulette Delker, God Wants You Well by Andrew Womack. Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, starting a week later than other groups on September 18th. Out at their farm, you're going to have to get directions from them. Uh, health is something that everybody wants. Everybody wants good health. Billions of dollars are spent each year trying to retain or restore health. It's a basic desire of all mankind. Anyone who likes sickness must be not well. <laughs> Yet religion has told us that God is the one who makes us sick. That doesn't make sense. It even tries to make us believe that sickness is a blessing, and that is not true because God wants you well. Healing is in Christ's atonement. Jesus died for our health just as much as he died for our si the forgiveness of our sins. In fact, most Bible verses that talk about the forgiveness of our sins also talk about our healing. This has to be the foundation of our faith for healing. Jesus went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil, and he told us to go out and to do the same. Jesus hasn't changed. It's the people who represent him who have changed. These are laws. There are laws that govern the spiritual world just like there are laws that govern the physical world. Electricity has been around since the beginning of time. We're just really in modern history utilizing electricity. Not because it didn't work, but because we didn't know about it, because of our ignorance to the laws of electricity. Likewise, God's healing is here and is available. It's only our ignorance of the laws which control the flow of God's power that keeps us from benefiting from it. To learn more about God's healing power for you, maybe you should join this group. On Thursdays, Deb and Charmian lead a group called Faith and Fitness. 
It's a women's fitness group, No Men Allowed. And they meet Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. It, actually, it's, we're doing this together with the Church of God. Tuesdays at 10 o'clock in the Church of God living room there. And Thursdays at 10 o'clock in the mornings uh, here at Hope City Center at Living Hope. And it's starting September 10th, Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. That'll be at Church of God. The 12th will be here. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31 says this. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus has answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. We all know that it's important to love God with our heart, with our soul, and with our mind because, honestly, the most often uh, reference to the greatest commandment is from Matthew chapter 22 where heart, soul, and mind are listed, but it fails to mention where we must love him with our strength. And so here in Mark, it says that we must love God with all of our strength as well. Ladies are encouraged to bring water bottles, workout mats, and if you are brave and so desire, bring weights as well. Come join other ladies that want to honor and love God with their strength by doing squats, push-ups, planks, and other moves to improve their physical health and strength. Then participate in the devotion led by one of the leaders as they all seek to strengthen their relationship with God in addition to strengthening their quads, biceps, and triceps. <laughs> Another group on Thursdays is led again by our associate pastor, Adrian, and it is on Faith Foundations by David Platt. Thursdays at 6 p.m., starting September 12th. Now, no one wants to look back on their life and realize that they missed the entire point we want our lives to count for what matters most. Unfortunately, many people, even including Christians, live for what doesn't matter. They have no purpose aligned with their lives, and especially with God's ultimate purpose for their lives. We were made to enjoy God in all of his glory and exalt God in all of the nations. In this study, David Platt identifies some foundations for our faith that are essential if we want to live for what truly matters. Every disciple has a part to play in the mission that Jesus has given to his church to make disciples of all nations. So whether you've been a Christian for years, discovered faith in Jesus recently, you're just starting your Jesus journey, or you are still wondering what it's all about, we share similar questions about why and how to live out our faith. We wonder what are we made for? What does it look like to know God deeply? Why are we called to reflect his light to those around us? And how do we do that? Join author and pastor David Platt in this 10-session series as he examines foundational truths for becoming mature disciples of Jesus. Those are the different life groups that are being made available for you and there is a spot for you, and there is a group for you. I know that one of those groups you thought, wow, that sounds really interesting. I really would like to explore that a little bit more. And so I'd encourage you to talk to the leader, to reach out to them, and to make sure that there's a spot available for you when that group starts up in a couple weeks. Dalen, can I get you to come now? We're going to prepare for communion right now. And so if there's any here that want to join in communion, which is open for all Christians, if you are a believer, it doesn't matter what church you were baptized in, how long ago you were baptized, if you are a believer, you are living for God today, we would love to celebrate with you in the Lord's Supper. And so uh, we, would you just please raise your hand if you do not have the elements right up front in the middle here, and you would like them. We would love to give them to you. And so raise them up nice and high. And uh, back over there as well. Right up front as well. Perfect. 
If you're wanting to know a little bit more about those life groups or you missed the slide that was up there, there is information out in the foyer, little blue handouts on like straight east from me right now. And they're on the wall there. Just grab one, take one home, look through the descriptions, pray through them. You actually have the leader's phone numbers on there. So you can just call them, you can text them, you can reach out to them, you can say, hey, I'm coming. Let them know you're coming. And so I would encourage you to do that. Take those home. If you don't know the group that you're going to be joining, grab one of those and pray about which group God would have you join. Communion is about... Did everybody get uh, the elements yet? Everyone has them now? Anyone miss them that wants them? Okay. Should have a nice little cup here like this. Communion is about partaking in the body and blood of Jesus and remembering his sacrifice for our sins. Not only is his body reflected in the bread... But his body is reflected in you and I, the church. We are the body of Christ. If we are to truly partake of this body, we need to be good partakers in this body. We need to be in right relationship with the church. Not just those here at Living Hope, but any believer anywhere. And Paul tells us clearly what love is. We are to love one another. That's to be the thing that Christians are known by. Christians are to be, have a reputation for love. Paul tells us what love is in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. So my question to you this morning is, are you loving others? And are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit as given to us in Galatians 5? The fruit of the Spirit produces, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So is there anyone that you have any bitterness against, anyone that you are harboring unforgiveness? Do you have an offense against anyone? Any unresolved issues at all? If so, I would encourage you to just put the elements down, to go and pursue relationship and reconciliation with that person or those individuals, and join us next time for communion. Communion is an expression of unity and love with Jesus and his body, the church. If we're not in full unity and love with other believers, we need to resolve that before we have communion. This is a priority. So again, I'd encourage you to, to seek out reconciliation with them. But those ready to participate this morning in communion, if you could remove the top layer, the clear layer, to reveal your tasty wafer. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 26. Sorry. We're going to read from, yeah, Matthew 26. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. Let's take of the bread together.
now if you could peel back that foil layer to access what represents the blood of Jesus. Then Jesus took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and he said, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Let's partake of the cup together. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, for doing what we could not do. You went through unimaginable things, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Things that we can't do. Things we can't even come close to doing. We thank you for that. We thank you for not only paying the price for our sins, but also giving us the opportunity and the tools to have wonderful relationships within your body. And so we pray, Lord, we would be demonstrators of the fruit of the Spirit. We pray we would be quick to listen, slow to anger, and rich in love. Pray, Father, that we would always forgive. We would never hold anything against another believer. That we would be known. We Christians that would be characterized by love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If today you recognize that you you aren't walking with Jesus, but you want to. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, if you want to start your journey with Jesus, it's honestly, it's very simple. You admit that you're a sinner, believe that he is Lord and Savior, and then commit to serve him today and every day. If you want to do that today, if I could ask everyone to just bow your heads and close your eyes. If you want to do that today, if you want to start your journey with Jesus, if you recognize that the things that you've been pursuing are not life-giving, but you want the life and the freedom that only Jesus can give, would you please raise your hand? Let us know that you are wanting to walk with Jesus. I see that hand. I see those hands. Any others? Any others want to walk with Jesus today and every day? If you have given your life to Christ already or you are wanting to for the first time today, please repeat after me. I thank you, Jesus, for doing what I couldn't do, for paying the price for my sin. I love you, and I want to live for you. Thank you for this new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It says that there are angels celebrating in heaven right now for those that have given their life to Christ. So let's celebrate today. Those that have given their life to Jesus, started their journey with Jesus today. That is wonderful. Another wonderful thing that we love to celebrate is prayer. And so if you are wanting prayer for any reason at all, could I get the prayer team to come forward? And we would love to pray with you to see God move in your life. And actually, if, uh, if there are young adults here that are heading off to college, university, a program of some sort, uh, if you are entering into a new job and you'd love to have God's hand over you, if you need a new job, we'd love to pray with you. If you need prayer for anything, let's just make it a blanket statement because honestly, we just love to pray for people. We love to see God move in your life. And so if you need prayer for anything at all, but especially if you are entering into a new season, a new new academic year, 
We'd love to pray with you, pray God's blessing over you, and see God move in your life. There's coffee, there's, there's snacks out there, and there are wonderful people to chat with, and there are blue, white and blue, life group handouts for you to grab, for you to pray over, and to see which one God would have you join. So I'd encourage you, grab one of those on your way out as you grab a coffee and a snack and your kids and have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and go and be the church because you are the body of Christ. God bless you.